Hey everyone and welcome to our next video chat. Um, we hope you're all doing well and staying safe. And if you've been following along, we've been hearing from farmers and other members of the supply chain in communities across the country as they share their experiences managing the changing landscape brought about by COVID-19. And our goal through these conversations is to hear from a variety of voices and topics so that we can stay connected, uh, so that we can learn and come out of this together. So we're so excited to be able to have Rinska de Jong, co-owner of Working Cows Dairy in Slocum, Alabama with us today. Um, Working Cows Dairy was established in 1985 and produces certified animal welfare approved by a greener world, certified grass-fed grass by a greener world dairy products, including milk, award-winning cheeses, butter, and more for a variety of markets, uh, direct to customer, restaurants, grocery stores, and other retail outlets in the Southeast. So Rinska, thank you for taking a little time away from the farm to talk with us today. Uh, we are so, so grateful for the conversation. And so just to get going, um, how are you and your family doing now several weeks into the pandemic? Uh, we've, been, uh, we've been doing great. Uh, we have, up till now, uh, stayed away from all the sick people, I guess. How has the pandemic affected your dairy operation? Uh, we deliver uh, processed milk to about uh, to some major coffee shops. And we lost all that business, all the restaurant business, all the coffee shops. So we lost about, uh, I know it's the, the time of the year where I make always a lot of cheese, but we lost about a third of our income to to the coffee shops. What I, I have to put in cheese. It's not that it's fault, but I have to put in cheese and butter and sell maybe later on. You know that might take a year or two, but uh, at least it's not all the way gone. And um, what about you? Said a little bit about your markets. So um, how how else have they changed in the last month? Uh, well, the first two weeks, all the ground beef was gone, and then, uh, and then now, uh, yeah, it keeps on going. Even though I had a lot of ground beef sales the first two weeks, I thought, well, it's going to level out, you know, and I'm going back to where it was. But then the last couple of weeks had been just still, where people say, oh, we can't get no eggs in the store, and we can't get no milk in the store. But we still have, I told them, you know, people don't get it that as a farmer, you know, as a dairy farm, you milk cows twice a day. You have milk every day where people think they call you and they say, hey, do you still have milk? And I have to explain, you know, we milk cows twice a day, you know, and then we still have milk coming every week. And so, yeah, it's been different. It, it, yeah, it really has been different. Actually, it's been good for us on the farm to get more recognized. Well, let's just go, since you brought it up, let's just go right next to talking about social media. Um, you're pretty active on social media, and I know there are a lot of farmers who have made the switch to online sales um, who are starting to see how important this really is for their marketing. And so um, do you have any social media tips for farmers who are trying to really up their online presence? Uh, try to focus on local. Where I went wrong before is where I'm more focused on on getting the name out in America or on on special Facebook and Instagram. I, I focus now totally on local, even if it's still between 18 and 64. Uh, don't go too far out and don't do the search words. Just go by local market. That has helped me a lot. Don't want to say that it will help everybody. My online sales have picked up. But I also had hired, just before all this, an SEO, Search Engine Optimizer. And I think he's doing a great job on helping me get it all started and get getting more because we need to get our name out more. You know, that's what's known already before this whole thing happened. You know? Right, right. Those are great tips. Um, well, do you have any sense of the long-term impacts of COVID-19 on farming? And have you ever seen anything like this before? No, of course I haven't seen nothing like this before, but um, we have always said, um, it looks like it has to have a third world war before people realize that they need a local farmers. 
And this might not be a world war, but it has the impact what it needed to have for people to realize that we local farmers need more support. And any local business, and I mean, I'm you know, I'm a pretty outspoken woman, but uh, I go sometimes to the pot house and the guy says, oh, you've been back on TV. And I'm like, yeah. He said, yeah, you were outspoken. I said, yeah, but you're one of those people who never came to the farm over the last 30 years. You know, I buy all my parts from this local store. You know, this older man, uh, by now he's probably 75 or something, like, but he still runs the pot house. I still spend money every month. He has not been over here for half a gallon of milk. And that's what they just said, and that's what I hope this thing will happen to the economy, that these local people, what are now asking for support from the local people, are actually also walking the walk, that they're actually going to do and say, okay, I'm asking for support, but I need to support my local suppliers too. And, yeah. and that's what I hope what comes out of this, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Well, what would you say to farmers who are facing big challenges right now? Think outside the box. Think outside the box. I mean, you have to think outside the box. If it's something what worked years ago, it's not working. But I, th- I think a lot of those local smaller family farms have a, have always had a hard time to get our name out. I don't know why. And you're doing everything right in your heart, what you know what, what you need to do. But just start thinking out about other things you can do. That's that's wonderful, wonderful advice. Well, thanks so much, Rinska. I, I know there are lots of folks out there who really who really appreciate hearing from you and all that comes from your years of hard work and experience. So take care everyone and be sure to stay tuned for the next video in our series.